Hi, my name is Phil Calvert and welcome to another video with Old Mutual Wealth, helping you to make the most of social media in your business. In this video, we're going to have a closer look at Twitter. Now, Twitter's been around since July 2006, and since that time, it has turned into the most extraordinary internet communication tool. You can do pretty well anything with Twitter, but at its heart is the tweet. You've probably heard it mentioned a lot. A tweet is basically one sentence, keeps it short and sweet. You have 140 characters to get your message out there. There's also the retweet, where you forward on or share somebody else's tweet. Very, very simple at the heart of it. So how could we be using social media as financial advisors? How could we be using Twitter in our particular businesses? Well, we've already mentioned that we need to have a profile page. Now, for a lot of financial advisors, they're not quite sure what should we be putting out there? What content should we be putting out there onto Twitter? But the first thing to do is, having got that profile up there that says what you do and what you're about, and it's got your website address, at least you're on there. People can see that you're in the modern world, you've got a profile, and they can pretty quickly get a sense of who you are, what you're about, your area of expertise, and a sense of your professionalism. One of the first things you could do when you're on Twitter is just use it to watch and observe and follow other people. Follow other people in the industry follow providers like Old Mutual Wealth, for example. Use Twitter as a search engine. I'll give you an example of how one financial advisor uses Twitter as a search engine. I know a financial advisor who's down in Cornwall, and he uses the advanced search tool that's on Twitter, and he programs into it, he searches for specific keywords, words like pensions, investments, mortgages, and he puts a geographical radius on those. So, if somebody mentions the word, say, pensions, within 50 miles of his office, it flashes up that tweet on his screen. He then figures, well, if somebody's mentioned the word pensions fairly close to my office, that's a tweet that I want to have a closer look at. Because, as you know, there's a lot of content, there's a lot of tweets going on out there, but he uses the search engine as a filter for specific words that he's interested in. So that's something that you could do as well, and you'll very quickly realize that Twitter is a very, very powerful search engine. Something else that I would strongly suggest that you do is to actually ask your clients if they are on Twitter or indeed other social networking sites. We mustn't just assume that if our clients are in their 60s or the 70s, they're not using this stuff. If we don't ask them, we don't know. One of the reasons for doing this is, well, first of all, you've got another way to communicate with those clients. Some will, of course, when you ask them, are you on Twitter, they'll go, no, I'm not. But you'll be surprised how many of them actually are. And then you've got an opportunity to connect with them. You've got another way to communicate with them and another way to add value to them. And I think this is one of the important things to remember about social media broadly, and indeed Twitter, is that this is not just about sales and marketing. This is something, it's another way to add value to your proposition. In fact, it is part of your proposition. Something else that you could do, every single professional connection that you've got, perhaps some accountants or solicitors that you have down the road, ask them if they're on Twitter as well and go and connect with them as well. So once again, you've got another way of keeping in constant contact with them to remind them that you are there, to remind them perhaps they might like to pass some business on to you. Twitter is not just about spreading your message to the whole world and beyond. Never ever forget the importance of local business. And from the financial advisors that I speak to, a large proportion of their business is in fact local. So once again, look for other local businesses who are on Twitter. Communicate with them, follow them, interact with them, engage with them. And then over time, they will start doing the same with you. If they see a tweet that you've posted, they are likely to retweet it onto their followers. You know, most financial advisors tell me that the core aspect, that the core way that they get business is through referrals. And in many ways, Twitter is a great way to generate referrals simply by having a conversation with other people online. This isn't really about sales and marketing. This is about doing what human beings do well, interacting, engaging, communicating with other people. 
just like you would be doing with your colleagues, just like you would be doing with your family, or doing with friends in a pub or at a dinner party. So don't see Twitter as just a tool for sales and marketing. In fact, I would strongly urge you not to use it for sales and marketing. If you're selling anything at all, you're selling yourself as a person. Remember that expression, people by people. They always have done and always will. And that, in my view, is what Twitter is all about. Giving other people the opportunity to buy into you, your expertise, your character, and your professionalism. A quick recap on Twitter. First appeared in 2006 as a really short, sharp, quick messaging system. How short are the messages? 140 characters in every tweet. That's all you've got to play with. A retweet is where you share somebody else's tweet to your followers. Followers are people who have followed you. In other words, they want to see your content. A hashtag adds emphasis to a tweet that you are making, or it helps to make your tweets more visible in search results. Your timeline is a list of tweets that you are seeing from the people that you follow.